Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Covered, I'm Penge, and welcome to Floodland, which is a post-apocalyptic city-building survival game set in a world that's been quite badly flooded. So, the story behind the game is that climate change led to a series of natural disasters, which then led to catastrophic flooding, which then led to the collapse of civilization as we know it, and I'm sure there's a very subtle message in there somewhere. So we have to lead a ragtag bunch of survivors who have to do the classic city-builder survival things, like build and scavenge and research and develop as a community and all that kind of good old post-apocalyptic stuff. However, most post-apocalyptic games are set after a nuclear war, aren't they? It's always barren, dusty wastelands and radiation and all that kind of stuff, but Floodland is obviously different. It's a watery sort of apocalypse, so we'll end up building on the tops of buildings that are sticking out of the water, which is a little bit different. I quite like that. It's got a different spin on the whole end of the world thing. Now, this is the demo of the game, which is part of the Steam Next Fest event, which is currently ongoing, and of course, if you're interested there is a link to the steam store page in the video description below so you can go and have a little look and also have a go at the demo yourself if you'd like to but anyway time to dive in i think let's go and do some post-apocalyptic surviving okay so first up we have to pick a clan to play as which i do quite like the sound of i thought we were just going to be you know generic group of survivors number one but no we form part of a clan who've got their own view on the world and they've got their own traits as well so here we go let's look at clan number one good neighbors so they like a bit of old world liberty, apparently. A clan that values a certain amount of freedom and decentralization, but follows old day values. Okay, so they're sort of a bit traditional, but they're trying to move ahead because it looks like maybe they understand that the world has changed a little bit around them. So maybe the old ways don't sort of work so well anymore. And their trait is that they're workaholics. While getting an issue overworked, these people revert the effect of it at 50% effectiveness. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it sounds quite handy. So, okay, that's them. Then we have the Oak Hill Survivors. They like a bit of old world autocracy. A clan with a firmly established hierarchy, following traditional values, or a specific code relating to the old days. Okay, so they're kind of clinging to the old ways. They're quite traditional. They've not quite accepted that the world is different. Okay, and they eat 33% less food. That's quite good. Then we have the Fire Brigade. Okay, they like a bit of new world liberty. A clan that values freedom, science, and personal growth. Okay, I like the sound of that. That sounds wonderful. And they're resilient. So disease severity progress rate decreased by 40% for clan members. Okay, so they don't get ill quite as readily. And then we have Burkut 3, whatever that means. And they like a bit of new world autocracy. A clan that values science and rational thinking, but also order and security. So they still like science, a bit like these guys do, but they're more about order. They're a little bit more about control, whereas these are more about sort of freedom and such. And their trade is they make the clan search and collect goods 50% faster. Okay, again, that sounds useful. I like the sound of the fire brigade. I like the sound of them. A clan founded by a rescuer of a fire department. United to help as many people as possible, the group eventually formed a long-lasting community. The fire chiefs highly value diversity and tolerance, but also know how to strongly defend themselves against violence from other groups and punish those who break internal laws. Okay, that seems fair. To emphasise their multicultural identity, the clan celebrates holidays from different traditions together. Oh, I like the sound of that. These people sound wonderful. Yes, we're going to go and become the Fire Brigade, please, because I like the sound of them. Okay, here we go, and I can very happily confirm that spacebar is pause, which is wonderful stuff. Well done, game. Good job. Right, I think we're supposed to click on that just there, because it says assignment. There's something interesting there. Click for more details. Okay, hold fire on that for a moment, game. I'd like to go and have a little look around first, just to see where we are and what's going on and all that kind of stuff, but we will come back over here and click on that in a second. I think that's where we are. I think that's where all our people are because, yeah, it says five out of five. Can we find out what that is? It's like our little kind of little sort of uh, campsite or whatever. But OK, so that's where we are over there. Where have we actually ended up? What is going on around us? OK, we're on a little island by the look of it. And it does look a little bit worse for wear, shall we say. I mean, we've got some ruined houses over there. There's a lot of kind of junk out in the water over here. There's a ruined boat. There's the wreck of a yacht over there and another ruined building. There's loads of sort of bits and bobs floating about in the sea. Lots of detritus and rubble and such like. Some boat wrecks over there. Okay, it does look very destroyed, doesn't it? It looks in a very, very bad way indeed. There is a water tower over in the distance over there. It might be worth going to have a look at that at some point. 
We could get scrap from it, or we could get drinkable water from it, possibly. I'm not entirely sure. And then there's loads of trees and all that kind of stuff. There's some mushrooms by the look of it around the base of these trees here. So there's plenty of food by the look of it if we're into mushrooms. I don't know if we can gather some other food. Maybe we find something in these buildings here. I mean, yeah, it's going to be a very mushroom-heavy diet, I think. But okay, right, let's click on this then. So what is going on? The new beginning. Okay, there is Nicole Johnson, the scientific advisor. Hello, Nicole. Uh, we've arrived. This is where the scouts sent up those flares. It looks like they were right. They found the signs I told them to look for. I must say, I'm a touch nervous. We're going to try to restart civilization, or at least give it that initial spark. However, this isn't something people do every day, you know. No, it's not a common thing, is it? Speaking of sparks, this is a spot from where we're going to launch our search for the pre-event rebirth power plant. It was top of the line just before everything collapsed. For over 20 years, only scavengers have roamed this place from time to time, setting temporary camps, probably unaware of the treasures to be found here. Now, I have the trustworthy intel that the plant is somewhere in the area. Okay, so we need to find the rebirth power plant. First, though, I'm hungry. I guess everyone is. We can't jumpstart civilization if we starve to death. Wise words indeed. Okay, so gather a food supply before you set up camp. Okay, and it says there, Taylor Palmer, Fire Brigade, interested me to be their chief, but I'd rather call myself their guide. We decided that we should gather all the food in one place to be shared by everybody. Okay, Taylor Palmer, that seems like quite a good idea. Um, okay, so chapter one, Stationary Travellers. I like that. I like the artwork there. Uh, this flooded wasteland may become the birthplace of a new urban civilization. However, first, we have to take care of our survival here. Okay, so find all the scouts and take care of them. Okay, so there were some scouts here once upon a time. Can we go and find them? Okie doke. Right, so what do you want us to do exactly? Gather a food supply before you set up camp. Okay, how do we gather food? That's got a yellow dot on it. Are we supposed to go and do that? Ah, search and explore. Set up scavenging areas over resources that, be that can be collected by scavengers. Okay, so we click that and then we just put it over things. Um, ah, okay, right. So it tells you what they can grab. They're grabbing all those mushrooms or whatever, I imagine. Yeah, resources in the area. That's 30... I assume that's food. It's got like a little sort of a bowl and a spoon in it. So 30 food, I would guess. And 50 wood. If we go over there, we need 60. Okay, can we place multiple of these? Can we put many of these in? There's 15 bits of food over there. Oh, there's whatever that is. Something in a blue bucket. I'm not quite sure what that is, but okay, that's quite useful. Um, oh, there's loads of it down there, look. So that's like sort of you know, rubble and trash or whatever. Okay, right, firstly, let's get food. Hang on. There's 20 food right there. Hang on. 25 food if we do that. We're not picking up the mushrooms. Hang on, what are they? What's that stuff? Berries! Good old berry bushes. Hooray! Oh, I'm glad berries have survived the apocalypse. That's quite good. Okay, so I think if we then unpause time... They're all going to pootle over and grab some berries. I mean, those berry bushes are absolutely enormous compared to the size of the people. The mushrooms. Hang on, hang on. We can't zoom in, which is a bit sad, but the people are that big. The mushrooms are gigantic. I assume it's not to scale. Um, okay, so they've gathered quite a lot of stuff. So we've got 20. We should have 25 food, and that person's a bit slow to arrive. And there we go. Right. So then we have to do that again, do we? So if we put that over there that's another 35 food that should be enough to keep us going can we put another one out oh we can't okay right hang on then hang on can we go and grab some wood from over there then uh oh and there's a weird flower thing over there i don't know what that is but we'll grab some more food and then we'll grab some wood because i'm imagining we might need some wood to do some building work that's kind of how this works so okay right so unpause time so go and grab all the food from over there are those the dead trees as well we can cut down, I imagine? Hang on, can we go and grab a dead tree? Um, no, but we can grab another 20 food from there, which makes sense. So, okay, they can grab all the stuff from here. Bring that back. We're on 40 food out of 60. 45 food. Yeah, we'll be at the at the food total in no time. Do you know what? Let's move time on a bit quickly, shall we? Um, yeah, water is running out. I imagine we are going to have to go to that water tower thing. That's going to be key. Oh, there's something there. Hang on, what's that? assignment there's something interesting there okay yes i'm going to click on the building um derelicts during gameplay you can come across ruins of buildings on the map if there is an icon with an exclamation mark above a building like that one there it means that after sending people there an interaction with the occupants will occur 
The overview of each ruin contains all the necessary information about what can be found there. Okay, so that's over here. Besides the resources that we collected from such places, there is also a box that informs about the chance to get infected while staying there. Oh good, okay, so we could possibly get infected by something. But if we do go and have a look in that building, we can pick up, um, what's that? Oh, people, two people. Oh no, question mark people. I thought it was a two, no, it's a question mark. So some people are in there and then we've got 100 bits of rubbish. That's what the sort of blue thing is, the blue stuff in a blue box. And then we've got some lovely clean drinking water and then a couple of radio batteries. Okay, right, that's quite exciting. Hang on, let's get our food done first. Let's get the food set up first, all in, we'll have a nice snack, and then we'll nip out there tomorrow, because time is ticking on. Time is ticking on, it goes quite quickly. So here we go, let's speed time on, there we go. We need, I know we're eating the food. We're eating the food because it's getting late. So okay, can we bring back all the food please? There we go, we have 60 food. Okay, seems like it's gonna be enough for a while. Now we don't have to starve, we can, you know, jumpstart a civilization. It almost feels like, abiogenesis out here in the untamed flooded lands. Imagine I'm not a scientist. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, whoops, sorry. Abiogenesis is a fancy biology word that means the start of life. I'm almost embarrassed using such big words, but sometimes they're just too perfect not to use. A little bit showy off here, but you know what? I now know what it means and I'm going to use it as well. Hooray for abio, or is it abiogenesis? Abio, I don't know. That word there, I don't know how you say it. Okay, so do we have a new goal? Find the scouts and take care of them, it said over there. Um, the scouts that came to this area before us have continued to explore. We should find them and see what kind of information they might have. I need to talk to them to see if they've discovered any details about the power plant. However, so far, everything looked good. It's definitely the right area. One step at a time, though, the scouts are currently holed up in some sort of derelict... Oh, some of the derelicts floating around here. Let's go and collect them. Are they going to be in that house that we were just looking at? Find the scouts hiding in nearby ruins. Okay. Can't they see that we're here? I would have thought that the scouts might have known. Oh, hang on, I just sped time on to lunchtime. <laughs> hang on a minute, hang on. Um, yeah, go and have a look in that building, please. And did we uncover anything over here? Uh, we can search the water tower for 100 water, but we can only store 85 water. So if we do that now, we are gonna waste a little bit of it, but we're running out. Oh no, hang on, this has got water in, hasn't it? So new people found they have resources. Okay, we found them. The scouts barely survived the expedition. Most of their equipment and resources lost when their boat sank in the storm. Now they're happy to join us, but on the condition that there is enough food for all of us. They can manage on their own for a while yet, they say, and they don't want to be a burden. Uh, no, they can join us. It's going to cost 40 food. Yeah, we've got 85. It's fine. Yeah, absolutely. More people. The more the merrier. We've met people who are not members of any clan. They are eager to join us. Yeah, okay, absolutely. On we go. So we've got, what, 20 people on board and 15 are idle. And there we go. The scouts confirm it. This is the area. Not that I had any doubts, but now I have hard scientific evidence the Rebirth power plant has been leaching a very specific isotope into the waters around here. It gives us a direction. It's a massive swath of untamed floodland that needs to be combed through, though. Okay, so we found the scouts, and now we've got... Ah, we have a research point. Okay, I imagine the game's going to kind of tutorial us with that one, but that's quite exciting. We've had our first theft. Raccoons! They're getting into everyone's food. We need to start making some serious group storage buildings. The food is useless if it's being pilfered by man or beast. Also, we shouldn't continue sleeping in the same place where we store the supplies. It's no good for our things, nor for our sleep. Indeed, it does sound like we're no longer nomads, but we'll have to start laying down serious roots. Okay, so we're going to need storages, and we're going to need houses and all that kind of stuff. Okie dokie. Right, so set up a permanent storage facility. Um, okay, hang on. There's an orange, well, yellowy dot down there now. Are we supposed to unlock something? Uh, exploration. Small storage. Okay, so what is there? Can we have a look? So, of course, there's different storage sizes, different types of path, radio towers, platforms, piers, some sort of scaffolding thing. I mean, that's just on... And exploration, hang on. So can we go through different things? Survival has got different things. So foraging huts, water stills, fishing docks, kitchens, cookhouses, shellfish posts, very nice. Um, then we've got development, which is like logging huts. Oh, and a study and yeah, sort of resource gathering stuff. Um, living is tents and shacks and all that kind of stuff. And then back to expression. But okay, small storage. I kind of feel like we're supposed to go and get this. So yes, please. 
we shall have one of those. It's going to cost 300 rubbish to get that done. Okay, right. So I think what we do is, can we see our rubbish total? We picked some up from there, didn't we? Oh, we're scavenging right now. We've not kind of got everything back yet because everyone's doing the conga back to the little base. Okay, look. There we go. Look, everyone doing the conga. Um, okay, so can we, whilst we're here, just um, yeah, nip over there. Look, there's a little bit of food over there. So go and grab 10 food. That's got to be a good thing. And then there's 15 food over there and quite a lot of rubbish. So you can go and pick that up, but we do need to make sure we have some food. But yeah, we've not quite got the rubbish yet. So okay, let's move time on nice and quick. That does move time on very fast. That's really quick. Look at that. That flies by. You have to be really careful when using that. Um, okay, there is no more free space uh, for prepared food in storage. Oh, okay. Right, so we can, hang on. 150 rubbish. So can we go down here then, pick up 200 rubbish from down on the, um, I was going to say beach. <laughs> Is there, Does that count as a beach? Down on the shore, shall we say. There we go. Um, and yeah, we'll go and build our kind of storage thing once they've got up to 300 uh, rubbish. So that's what we need to build our stores with. How do we build exactly? It's just their buildings. It's too early to think of this. Check back later. Can we see how our science is doing? Can we see how we're doing with that? Um, new start and rubbish. Hang on, we develop new start. Um, and lots of technologies which are based on rubbish. Hang on, where did we find... Hang on, it was exploration over the thing, wasn't it? So is that unlocked? Yes, it is. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, so maybe we need to get the, the rubbish in stock first to then unlock the building options. Maybe that's what we're supposed to do. Okay, well, let's get time ticking on. So we've now got 300, 350 rubbish. Let's go to technology development. I, we've, I'm very confused. <laughs> How do we build the thing? Set up a permanent storage facility. Upgrade encampment. Oh, upgrade the encampment. Oh, okay. Upgrade to small storage. Okay, so there's our encampment. Okay, there we go. Right, so the fewer workers a building has, the less efficient it will be. Yeah, I got that. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. Okay, so upgrade that, please. Oh, well, there we go. I thought we were building a whole new thing, but no, we're upgrading our existing thing. Right, you are. Right, okay. So let's get time moving on a bit quicker so we can complete that. The raccoons won't be getting into our food stores anymore. Also, we've started at building a real settlement. Consider it the groundbreaking ceremony. Congratulations. Okay, we get a research point which is good. So now we can build perhaps another small storage thing. People need shelter. Okay, so now we need to get some shelter underway. Okay, so, uh, yep, yeah, okay, I'm sure you said some wise words there, but hang on a second. Um, so go into here, and then we're going to need living, and we're going to need tents. Okay, right, so let's unlock the secrets of tents. Makeshift tents made out of rubbish and sheets of fabric. Okay, sounds delightful. Okay, so we shall have that, please. So, I think that's it. I don't think there's a research time. I think as soon as you say, yes, I want to learn that, then you get that knowledge. I like that. That's a colourful tent. I don't want my living in that tent, apart from the drafts and, you know, the lack of toilet facilities and, you know, the lack of a comfy bed and all that kind of stuff. But apart from the lack of all the things, it does look quite nice. Right, okay. So let's build ourselves a home, shall we? So here we go. Hang on. So, yes, tent. So we can build a little storage thing. Uh, we can't anymore because we used the plastic to upgrade that, I imagine. Um, okay, and a tent is 150... 150 rubbish. Okay, we might have to go and get some more rubbish. I mean, can we get some from there? Um, ah, yes, we can get 200 from there. Okay, so let's go and search the decayed ruins. We get some wood. We get some rubbish. What's that? Risky food. Okay, <laughs> maybe we don't want to have risky food. Cook it in kitchens to make it healthy. Okay, that's, yet yeah, dubious leftover things. Okay, no, never mind. We'll pass on that for now. There's loads of... um stuff loads of uh plasticky rubbishy stuff down on the beach there so hang on can we go and grab that there's 250 over there in fact 350 if we just position it a bit further inland so there we go we can get loads and loads of rubbish however we also do need to go and get some food some berries over there i notice so maybe we could go and grab is there any five berries so five berries there um yeah what's that thing 
herbs. Okay, that's going to be used for like medicine and stuff, isn't it? Have we got any more food? We are running out of food a little bit there. We could, can we grow some food, please? There's those are mushrooms over there. Can we just go and have them? Um, okay, right, hang on a minute, hang on. We've got an all right amount of food, so let's move time on quickly. Um, I wonder what's for dinner today. If it's mushroom soup again, I'm going to lose it. I would be surprised if it is mushroom soup because we've been foraging berries and the mushrooms seem to be out of range at the minute. Yeah, we can't get them. We need a forager hut to get mushrooms. So you've got a secret stash of mushroom soup there, my good sir. <laughs> you should uh, share that with everybody. Okay, right, hang on. Move time on nice and cool. Oh, hang on. 600 rubbish we've got now. So now we can do some building. So here we go. We can build a tent. Um, let's build it. I mean, let's put it near to our little thing over here. Shell corner. Is that what we've called our little camp? Oh, that's quite nice. Um, okay, so we'll have a tent there. Can we rotate them? Uh, ooh, no. Okay, R actually brings up the scavenging thing. Okay, we can't rotate things around like that then. Is it tab to rotate? I don't know how we rotate anything. Um, okay, we'll just pop down, I don't know, like one there and one there and another one there. Let's get three of those in and we'll see if that's okay. We'll see if that kind of works, all right? Uh, we have an alert. Do we need to care? 20 homeless people. Yeah, we're on it, game. We're on it. It's absolutely fine. Right, so everyone's pouring back into this here. But um, yeah, we could do with them finishing their homes. But here we go. Let's put time onto a super speedy, super fast mode. And there we go. We have some tents, which is wonderful. Uh, that's a fabulous start. As we said, we'll want housing for everyone, but make sure you focus on food and water first. It's a real Maslow's hierarchy of needs sort of situation. Again, sciencey stuff, but okie dokie, sounds wonderful. Time for a reality check. We know this won't be a quick camping adventure. Before we even start looking for the power plant, we have to think about setting up something more permanent and more sustainable with solid sustainable methods of gathering food, water and materials. It's going to be a bit of a winding path, but never forget that keeping people's basic needs met is what's most important when it comes to being in charge. Sometimes you might have to make hard choices and try to keep everybody fed. Hopefully it won't come to that, of course. Okay, so provide a steady supply of edible plants or fish, get clean water, gather a supply of rubbish. Okay, right. Okay, that's fine. Right, so it's doing a quick save. Come on, game. There we go. Okay, so pause time because it does go past very quick. So we can gather rubbish. We've got a little bit to pick up from over here, look. So getting rubbish is going to be fine. That'll total up okay. Um, but yeah, so we need an edible, a source of edible plants or fish. So I think maybe we do need to get a gatherer set up. So can we have... Oh, hang on. Rubbish. Unlocks technologies which are based on rubbish. Okay. Is that where the game is telling us to go? Um, we've got... Hang on. How many points have we got? Have we been... We've been ah! We've been given 10 research points. Oh, that's quite nice. Okay, right. So we'll have that, please. And that unlocks four survival things and one development thing. Okay, so a sorting hut. What does that do? Allows for faster collection and sorting of rubbish from large deposits. Or we could go for survival and get all of these things. Okay, here we go. So I think job number one, water still. That's very important. We need one of those because if we don't have any water, we're going to die of thirst. So we'll develop one of those. That's one point. Thank you very much. Um, and then a fishing dock makes sense. Given that we are playing a game called Floodland, it implies there's a lot of water around. So I'm guessing there's still fish. In fact, there's more room for fish because there's more water now. So how about we spend two of our points on a fishing dock? Uh, and then we've got... Hang on. Have we been given the exact amount of points we need? So the field kitchen is two. The forager hut is two. Oh, but hang on. We haven't got the other thing whatever that thing was hang on we haven't got the uh the sorting hut we haven't unlocked that so we can't unlock everything okay so do we get a sorting hut that might help that might help quite a bit so we'll get one of those and then go on to survival do we get the forager hut or do we get the field kitchen so that makes nutritious dishes from raw ingredients Okay, so that's going to turn our fish into actual edible food. Do you know what? Let's get one of those as well. Let's get a little field kitchen set up, shall we? And now we need to get building. Here we go. Right, so let's get ourselves, in terms of survival, a... Um, hang on. No. Where's the thing first? A sorting hut. We need one of those, I think, because then we can get more plasticky, rubbishy stuff. 
So where do we put that? Allows for faster collecting and sorting of rubbish from large deposits. No resources nearby. So if we put that over here, is that allowed? It's kind of in... Oh, the base bit's green, I suppose. That's in red, so we can't build on that type of surface. Um, I mean, we can't really build much down there. That's not got much within range. I imagine we can move that circle. That's going to be like a work area, isn't it? So we can move that around. Um, there's quite a lot down here on this beach. So why don't we maybe set up there for now and we'll see how that works. So that'll do for that. And then we're out of we're out of rubbish. So, okay, let's push time on a bit quick. Let's get that done. Although, as we have seen, time does go by very quickly. Indeed. Okay, two people are working in there, which is good. Um, two people are going to now go and gather stuff from here, I imagine. So is there a work area? Is that what we have here? So uh, deconstruct it, stop producing stuff, upgrade it. Um, but yeah, do we have to build next to the piles of rubbish then? So, we, I mean, how are we ever going to get that over there? I'm not entirely sure. Um, okay, never mind, never mind. And yeah, that's the upgrade option. Okay, but they should be able to start getting us some more some more rubbish, which is good, because right now we can't do anything. We're completely stuck. We've got no access to build anything. So let's hope that they do some good stuff. If you could gather some rubbish, that'd be good. So they've taken 25 rubbish from there, and now they're sorting it. Okay, so hang on. Can we move time on very quickly? I'm a bit concerned that we are running out of that food. <laughs> We're going to have to start cooking the risky food. I don't want to do that. So if we could start getting some of this, that would be good. Um, 25, 25 rubbish. Is that it? How much do you need to build the stuff? How much do you need to build, say, the fishing dock? So we can get some fish. 300 for that and 300 for the field kit. No, 300 wood. Ah, hang on, hang on. The field kitchen is wood. Okay, hang on. We can build a field kitchen. Let's get that in, shall we? So let's go and do some scavenging over there. Because that will get us the exact amount of wood we need. So yeah, somebody go over there, please. Then we can build the field kitchen. And then we might just need to go over here and scavenge all that kind of plasticky rubbish stuff from there. Um, and then, yes, we need to go over here for a big pile of water. Because currently, we don't have any water at all. And that's generally quite bad, isn't it? So hopefully... We have enough people to go out and do all these jobs. That's going to be quite handy. Um, and then, yeah, at some point, we could turn that into a renovated house. If we save up our rubbish, we can turn that into a little house, which does sound quite nice. Um, okay, right, move time on a bit quick. Food is coming down. A little bit concerned about the lack of food. Um, okay, I like in the distance, we can see you know, what was. We can see what used to be sort of you know, the world. It's like tall buildings still sticking up, but I mean, we're on the top of something. I assume this was like a, a hill in a park or something. Oh, hang on. There's something over there. What's that? House ruins. Oh, okay. We need diving equipment to get to that. Oh, look. There's like a rusted... Oh, hang. This is exciting. Okay. Right. There's an old park over there, like a sort of amusement park type thing. Oh, Okay, right, I like that. That's quite intriguing. But back we go over here, look. Right, 250, right, 300 wood. Okay, this is good. And that means if we get a field kitchen in, we can cook that risky food, which gives us a little bit more food. So, yeah, let's get the field kitchen set up. Um, I know, let's put it there. That'll do. That's a good place for a field kitchen. So let's go and build that. And somebody can work in there. And in the meantime, we can keep gathering rubbish, which is good. Uh, it's good to have a proper kitchen. Now we know our food won't poison us. Indeed. So can we please cook the risky food? Right, 325 rubbish means that we can get a fishing dock. Okay. So let's put it there. Is that okay? Um, are we supposed to put it... Oh, hang on, hang on. That's where we need to put it. There's kind of fish over there, look. There's some fish and then some whatever that is there. That's a bit far away. Hang on. Yes, we're supposed to put it out where we can grab. Hang on. Over here is pretty good, isn't it? If we position that correctly, we could get... Um, hang on. Like that, look. That's within three lots of fish. So if we put that there, yay for a fishing dock. So that should get us some more stuff going on to get some more food in that can be cooked by the kitchen. 
it's all coming together apart from the foods coming down so can we please build that thing really quickly <laughs> or you're all gonna starve um and then i was gonna say we've got loads of uh, loads of rubbish but we haven't because of course they've taken it to build the fishing dock um can we grab anything else are there any food resources anywhere just you know lying around the place anything there's some herbs there's some wood oh hang on there's 35 berries over there somebody go over there and grab that for a delicious snack please um okay so we've gathered rubbish we've got a supply of edible plants or fish um oh have we yes okay got some fishery stuff going on over here which is very good um and now we just need clean water so now we just need what was it 320 rubbish to build a water still uh, yeah okay let's move time on until we have 320 rubbish and there we go we've actually got 375 rubbish so a little bit extra which is quite nice and also i think our fishing dock is doing a pretty good job of catching lots of fish to send over to the kitchen for them to cook it up and turn it into proper food because we do have a half decent amount of food right now i would say it's not plentiful it's not like we're all having, you know, nine meals a day or whatever, but it's enough to get by. So that's OK. So let's build our little kind of water purifier thing, our water still. Um, where does that need to go? Needs to be built on shallow water. OK, so let's pop that right down there. And then hopefully someone can come out very quickly and build that. And my goodness me, the time does go by quickly. Right. So there we go. It's in. We well, you've done it. Okay, that's good. We get 18 research for that. We need to start applying the scientific method of researching the area. There's a lot of things we could be doing if we had the technology. This area seems to have a lot to offer. Resources, derelicts, also the isotopic runoff from the rebirth power plant has thankfully not killed off the local fish populations. Hooray, that's quite convenient. We should start studying everything we can. Old world relics, water levels, radiation levels in our food. The more we know, the more likely we are to succeed. All knowledge is good knowledge. Yeah, okay, so provide a place for people to study and produce research. Although we do have 18 research points right now, which is quite a lot. That's quite good. So I think, as well as having our fishery over there, maybe um, we should... Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, 15 of it's got to go on unlocking technologies which are based on wood. I wanted to get the, um, the thing in, the forager hut. Because I think that could be quite good. But then are we going to break tutorial land if we go and do that? I think maybe we're supposed to follow what the game wants us to follow. Hang on a minute. Um, yeah, how do we do that then? Okay, fine, fine. We'll go and unlock technologies which are based on wood. Uh, yay, there we go. Development, okay. And a study, okay. And that takes, that takes one. I think we can get the forager hut. So that takes one, so that's where we go and analyse data and what have you. Okay, that's good. And then, if we go to survival, get a forager hut, that gets berries and mushrooms. So we can have even more food. Maybe we could all be on nine meals a day. Okay, so, yeah, we'll develop that as well then, please. Um, and then we definitely can't build it right now. What do we need to build the, um, the thingamajig, the study? So 400, 400 rubbish and 350 wood good grief okay hang on do we need to go scavenging that's got where are we going to get all that wood from where are we going to get that from i'm not entirely sure um okay i mean there are lots of trees there's 50 wood over there so we'll go and grab some stuff there there's lots of trees are we supposed to cut the trees down is that what we're supposed to do unlocked by a hacksaw okay where's that that is somewhere in here, I imagine, by the look of it. Oh, it's down there. It's down there. Um, but it's ten. It's ten things. Okay, right. We, how do we build this, then? <laughs> how do we do this? I'm not entirely sure. Um, yes, we can't chop the trees down. So I'm not quite sure where all the wood's going to come from, unless it comes from over here. Um, let's sort of rub it. Oh, hang on. There's loads of little piles of things over there, look. So there's a rubbish pile there. We can search that. And we can search that. Um, is there anything else we can search? Little kind of piles of rubbish? Okay, right. So we have to... Do they not get picked up on this thing, then? Doesn't... Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't get picked up by that kind of generic searchy thing. Um, 
Like that, look. Tarp. Oh, temporary sleeping spots for those at proper shelter. Oh, oh, we haven't got enough homes for everybody. Oh, sorry, folks. Sorry. We'll, um, we'll sort that out. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's a bit of a technical issue. Um, yeah, I don't know how we're going to get the wood. I don't know how we're going to get the wood to build the thing. Um, ah, no, the Rex. 150. Ooh, and there's an old world relic in that yacht. Okay, no, we'll get that from there. And then that's where we get the wood from. And then the boat wreck over there, I see. Right. Okay, so people can go and do that. The storage has too many tasks to handle. <laughs> I know how you feel, storage. Um, okay, right. So let's move time on until we've got a decent amount of wood. And then we can build the study. So we need 400 rubbish and 350 wood. Okay, right. So we'll clear some of these tasks out of the way. And that should free up people to go and do other bits and bobs. But uh, yeah, right now they've gone over there to the boat wrecks and now they've all gone to bed or some of them have some of them are in um, sleeping bags or whatever we'll try and get some more tent set up soon when we have some more rubbish um but yeah let's see if we can gather loads of wood and various other bits and bobs there is only 20 percent of resources to collect left within our range that's that's not a happy message i don't like that message away with that message um okay hang on what's happening over there there is no more free space for rubbish in storage. Oh, hang on. We've maxed out on rubbish, but we can now build the study. Uh, oh, which is surprisingly large. Um, okay, so let's build it. I don't know. Where can we build it? Um, don't know. Over here? Let's put it next to the kitchen, shall we? Just for fun. There we go. So that can pop into there. That frees up more room to go and store more stuff. Hopefully they can build that. And then, yeah, we have got 300 rubbish. Is it worth building another exciting tent? Let's get one more tent in so some more people don't have to live in little sleeping bags outside. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? And then we can get everything set up. Right, more plastic coming in, which is very good. And we've recently built a study. So now we're actually going to gain research points. And I think it said that we can research old world tech that we find. Let's get that rubbish pile as well. How do we do that then? How do we do that? The study. The basic operation mode of the Institute. Oh, the Institute, is it? Oh, it's gone up in the world. Okay. Uh, it's to convert found relics into research, which, uh, which can be used to unlock more items in tech development. Relics can be found in various ruins across the playable ground. Okay. So we've got one bit of... Yeah, we've got one relic that we're piecing through that we're then turning into research. I wonder what it is. I'd love to know what it is. <laughs> That's very interesting. Ah, so apparently this is a Nintendo Switch, but we don't know what it's a Switch for. We're not entirely sure. I, I, I want to know what they're researching. What exactly are they looking through? I don't really know. Um, right, can we figure out how many people are homeless? Can we figure out how many homes we have as opposed to people? How many does that hold? That holds... Three, so three, six, nine, twelve. Okay, so we do need some more tents. Hang on a minute, hang on. Um, survival. Oh yeah, forager hut though. We could get our forager hut set up to get even more food. But food is looking okay. Risky food is looking okay because we turn that into proper food in the kitchen. So maybe right now what we do is we get some more tents. I think we get another couple of tents set up. Because that means more people don't have to live out in the cold, which is quite nice. So here we go. A couple more tents. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So one more tent. And that means that we can house everybody, which is very good. And there we go. We've produced research points. Hurrah. Okay. Right. That's good. Now that we've got the beginnings of a real settlement, we need to keep in mind what our goal is. If we actually find the rebirth power plant, we'll have to run the rebirth power plant. We start training people in specialised skills. We'll need people who can work, think, lead and follow. They've been fighting with sticks for decades. We need to put that behind us. We need to become civilised once again. We shall focus on training people in ways that would be useful for maintaining a permanent settlement or working with technology. You'll also want to start forging connections with the clans. Ah, OK, so we're going to go meet the other folks. You're in charge, but the people have their own opinions. They'll make their desires known, and sadly, no one is going to love everything you do. Most of them probably won't even like most of what you do. You'll have to keep a, uh, find a way to keep everyone together and focused on the goal. Still, we're well on our way. Okay, so set up a workplace of people with specialised skills. 
set up a learning environment for people to improve their skills, increase fortitude among people, fill one of the skilled jobs. Crikey. I mean, at the moment, I was quite happy that we we're building a little tent. <laughs> that seems quite advanced, doesn't it? Um, okay, so now the study can't do anything. The study is out of resources to actually filter through. Okay, that's fine. Right, so what do we have to do now? So development and survival have got two new things in. So a logging hut ah, or an academy. An academy allows people to gain experience and level up the clan. Okay, that sounds like quite a good thing. Is that what we want? Is that what we're supposed to go and get? I don't really know. That might allow people to get new skills. And then in survival, got the forager house and the fishing wharf. Okay, so why? What does the fishing wharf do? It's a developed fishing dock. I imagine we can upgrade the fishing dock then. Um, okay, so how do you do that? Ah, set up a learning environment for people to improve their skills. Develop the academy. Ah, okay, we've done that. And then we need to progress the fishing wharf or the forager house. Okay, so how about then? We've got the fishing wharf in. Why don't we get both? Why don't we get both things? I see, look, the sorting huts. Hang on, why is it stopped? The resource we collect here is about to run. Oh, it's not stopped quite yet. It's going to stop soon, but it's not stopped right now. Okie dokie, that's fine. So I think let's get, if we can, we can't build the forager hut. We haven't got enough rubbish. Um, and that means we need a sorting hut. I mean, can we pick up the sorting hut? Can we pick that up and move it somewhere? Hold production, um, deconstruct it, upgrade it. Um, that's not going to fly, is it? I mean, that's looking pretty good over here. The fishing dock is doing quite well. Do you know what? Let's get the upgraded fishing dock to a fishing wharf. Develop that for 10 of our precious research points. Um, and then can be adapted into a fishing wharf. We need some wood and we need a lot more rubbish. Okay, we've gone through the wood over there. The pile of rubble over there is no good. The wreck is no good. Where can we get some more wood from? Where can we get some more wood? Um, is there anything over this side that we've not clicked on? Is there a just you know, a fortuitously crashed boat over here? I don't think there is. There's trunks. We can't get those. Because we need to get some sort of hacksaw type thing. And that requires 10. But also we need to develop planks first. So we're a little way off that right now, I suspect. Um, okay, I'm not entirely sure where all the, um, where all the wood is going to come from. Because we're stuck on this little island and I can't see where the wood is. Um, yeah, that's not going to help either. That's not going to help. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe we're supposed to, I don't know, level up a clan through self-learning inside the study and increase the fortitude skill. So there's the study. Okay, building mode is standard mode. So now we can change the operation mode of the building. Okay, so standard mode is academy. Okay, so the academy now means that people go in and try to research things. Is, is that what I'm getting from that? Yeah, I think it is. So people are now going to go here and they're going to develop their skills. We don't have any textbooks, it seems. So we can't go and do that. I, are we supposed to be going over? There's a, like a little land bridge to whatever that is, a radio tower. Oh, hang on. We've just acquired an old world relic. Um, oh, okay. Are they using that to do some self-help stuff? Oh, I mean, that's quite good. I don't know where that came from, but okay. Hooray, we found a thing. <laughs> that's good. Um, does anybody know where all the wood's going to come from? Has anybody found a huge pile of wood lying around? Because that would be useful. Anyone got any wood? Those are trees, but no, they're not being helpful right now. We need some wood that's just kind of lying around. Okay, so I did spend a little bit of our rubbish on building the final tent we needed. So now everyone's got a lovely place to live. I'm going to say a lovely place to live. They've got a little tent to live in. Although at least the tents are colourful. Look at that. They look like the, um, like the Six Doctor's coat. They're all sort of bright and colourful and patchwork and all over the place. I quite like that. But there we go. So everyone's got a place to live, which is very good. And I think... We have a thing over here. Clan is ready to learn a new skill. So we must have gone through whatever textbook it was we found and we've picked up a new skill. So how does this work? I don't know what to do. Oh, okay. Clan profile. There's Taylor Palmer. Hello. 
Um, improve skill. Clan traits. What do we do here, game? I'm not entirely sure what's happening. So, clan member skills. Then we've got water, food, and health. So, I think we're okay in terms of this. Yeah, water. We haven't got any people wanting for water. No people wanting for food. Everybody is in good health at the moment, which is quite good. So, I think... Do we just press improve skill? I think that's what the game wants us to do. So, the leader is going to be fair. Lowers the theft and other effects of crime by 50%. Um, Martinet for the leader, clans, whatever that is, expression specialization is capped at one maximum. I don't know what that means. And they become resilient. Okay, I'm going to press improve skill because I kind of feel like that's what the game wants us to do. Pick one skill to improve by one level. Okay, so we can, ah, here we go. Here we go. So we can choose anything we'd like. Okay, right. So we go discipline. So that lets our people work more efficiently in jobs like gathering. Okay. Or we can be erudite. So that means they can be more efficient in gathering. Ah, okay, hang on. That's gathering scrap, wood, and then making rubble and charcoal. That's gathering water, herbs, and making meds. That sounds quite good. That is more efficient in making decent food. That is more efficient in catching fish, gathering rubbish, mining coal. That seems quite good. Um, or we've got better at uh, harvesting yields of food or recycling plastic. I think we go for that. Given that we're struggling to get enough stuff, maybe we should improve our ability to gather the very basics. So let's have a bit of that, please. And hooray. Increase fortitude among people. Level up a clan through the self-learning inside the study and increase the fortitude. Oh. <laughs> oh. Right. Did I pick the wrong skill to uh, to upgrade that? Hang on a minute. Hang on. How do I go and look at the thing? Do we click on you? Do we have to click on you? Um, I suspect maybe I've picked the wrong thing there. Hang on. Where is it? Clan profile. Um, and it was fortitude. By sheer chance, I've picked the right one. Okay. Hooray. Right. Okay, hang on. Can we move time? Oh, there we go. There we go. Fill one of the skilled jobs. I'm a bit confused. Hang on. Hang on. We can get some more research points here if we switch that back to standard mode because we do have a relic that we can expend on doing some researchy stuff. So let's get that done and then we need to figure out exactly how we're going to um, how we're going to gather some wood because I'm not entirely sure how we do that right now. So let's hope the clever people figure out a way to get some wood. Hang on. Hang on. In the research thing um, in oh, where would it be? I don't know, survival? Is there a wood cuttering place? No, not in there. There isn't a logging hut. That seems like a clever thing. Yes, we'll have one of those for 10 research points. Okay, we can't have one of those right now. Let's hope the sciencey clever people get us 10 research points. And they have. They got us 10. We're up to 12, which is very good. So I think I know what we need to do then. So now we need to go to wherever it was. So get the logging hut. Develop that. Thank you very much. Now we need to get some more rubbish to build the logging hut so we can then get ourselves... Hang on, there's berries. There's berries over there. We might want to go and grab the food whilst we can as well. Hang on a second. Go and grab some food, please. Um, because, yeah, that's what we need to do. So we need to... Hang on. There's a little bit of wood over there as well. Gather that, please. So, well, hang on. And more food over there. Food is important. So, yeah, I think... Hang on. There's rubbish over there. There's like loads of rubbish washed up. Go and get that 150 plastic over there. That's going to allow us to build the thing in the first place. Hang on. Development. Logging hut. 320 rubbish. So hang on. Let's wait until we've got that. If they go and grab all this, and that should come in pretty quickly. I love how time goes so quick. There you go. 405. So logging hut. Um, I think we put it just there. That's a perfect place for a logging hut in the middle of all the trees. So let's get that set up. And then we can get some wood underway. And then we can upgrade the fishing dock. And then we can fill a skill job or something. I'm not entirely sure, but we can do some stuff. Uh, we can't survive without water. Do something. What? We've got... Is that not enough? Oh, hang on. Is that little water thing not enough? Hang on a minute. Water still. Can we get another 320, uh, 320 rubbish, please? That would be quite useful. That's going to be 200 of it from over there. Yeah, that'll help out a bit. Okay, hello Emma Hardy, the handy woman. How are you? Suspicious water filter. This isn't going to be good, is it? Oof, I got some not great news. That's not what I want to hear, Emma Hardy. I want solutions, not problems. Something is very wrong with one of our water filters. The water that comes out of it has a strange smell. 
I think we should take a close look at it. I would take it out of service for a bit, and I know fresh water isn't exactly something we ever want less of, but I think it's best to have it checked to see what's going on, okay? It might take some resources to fix if there's something wrong with it. Still, it's better than anyone getting sick, yeah? Yes, I suppose it is. Um, yeah, okay. It will cost 100 rubbish, which is unfortunate because we're almost at the point where we can upgrade the fishing dock. But never mind. Yes, absolutely. Can we please go and sort out the water filter? So that'll be out of action for a while. That's a bit unfortunate. Um, yeah, okay. You know what's wrong with that filter? Someone put dead mussels in the tank. Disgusting. Good thing I figured it out in time. Okay, so it cost us 100 rubbish, but we have fixed the water filter. It's just been kind of repaired right now. Okay, so now we need to get back up to 300 rubbish because, yeah, we need to get that. Oh, hang on. No, it's 200 rubbish. Hang on. We can upgrade the um, the fishing wharf because now we have enough rubbish and we've got enough wood. Okay, this is wonderful. And the water still is back up and running and, you know, it, good time as well because we are running out of water. Okay, so let's get this upgraded and we'll see what that does and we'll try and fill one of those skilled jobs. Apparently we filled a skilled job. Go us! <laughs> Did we? Apparently so. Just look at us. A while ago, we were a bunch of ragged tramps. Forgive the language, but I mean also myself. Okay, uh, now we're like a well-oiled survival machine. Oh, I wouldn't say that. People are putting muscles in the water filters and all sorts. At this rate, we might not even need the rebirth power plant for civilization to be, well, reborn. But we will find it, and this will be our renaissance. Okay, so there we go. We did the stuff. Uh, radio tower. We did see the radio tower, didn't we? It was quite nearby. Um, if we can have a look at it, it'd be quite nice. Um, okay, I've learned the power plant was part of an experimental project, a joint venture between the private sector and the government. That's why there's so much military leftovers in the area, including a nearby radio tower. Some of the scouts that were sent to the area have yet to be found. They should have a radio receiver on them, though. If we can get to the tower, get it up and running, we might be able to contact them. On top of that, if we need more manpower to achieve what we want, we might be able to reach other people in the area with radio transmissions. We've already seen signs we're not alone. Okay, so we'd now need to... Ooh, chapter two, home on the wetlands. This place can become our home. We need to explore the neighbouring islands. Okay, so explore the area. Okay, let's go and have a... Qu How do we explore? How do we explore? Um, I don't know. Do we just do we just press that and go, like, here? Do we just do that? Can't explore outside of the storage range. I'm going to press there. I'm going to press the thing as far away as possible and we'll see if anyone comes over and has a little wander about. Is anyone going to pop over? Uh, yes. Ooh, a flare. A flare just went up. Okay, so I've sent up a flare over here and now we can see the radio tower over there and the flare has come back down. Okay, so can we go... We can't explore out of that area. So how do we get across there then? Do we go there? We try and send somebody over to that bit. Do they kind of hop over the rocks and go over to just there? Oh, they kind of paddle. They just paddle through the water. And there's a thing. There's an assignment. There's some more house ruins. Oh, hang on. We didn't turn that house into a useful thing, did we? We could all live in a house. Let's do that. We need ten more rubbish. Um, do you know what? Yeah, let's get that done. Well, the game has decided to go a little bit kind of wibbly. Oh, I think the game might have possibly crashed. No, there we go. <laughs> We're back. The game just had a bit of a wobbly moment. It's fine. We all do that from time to time, game. It's okay. Um, I want to upgrade the house. Let's make that into a renovated house, shall we? That could be a fun thing to do. So, yeah, let's go and do that. And there we go. We have a little house for five more people. So, yeah, some lucky people can not live in a tent. They can go and live in a slightly ramshackle, falling apart house. But you know what? I think we'll finish things up for now with Floodland. I think we've had a good look at the game to see how the very sort of early bits work anyway. I mean, we've not really got that deep into some parts of it. Of course, we're sort of doing the exploration bit now and we've found the island with the radio tower thing on it. And there's something over there as well. Not quite sure what that is, a flooded factory. I mean, there's a lot here. The map does look very big. Hang on, we're still going. Okay, nope, we're still going. There's a big pointy thing over there. I'm wondering if we can get to the pointy thing. Okay, the map is... Out. Okay, right, we can't get to the pointy thing, but the map is huge. Also, I'm not quite sure where we are. I'm glad those things are there. <laughs> We're over here, everybody. Um, but yeah, I think we'll finish up for now, because we've seen kind of how the basics of it work. 
how you set your things up and how you issue your workers and you do your research and you have to scavenge. You can do different ways of scavenging. You can build your buildings, all that kind of stuff. And you have your little kind of... um sort of mini mission type things as well that pop up and the decisions you make, like the one we have with the water filter. In a way, that reminds me a bit of sort of Frostpunk where you have a decision to make that will affect your community as a whole. That's quite Frostpunky, I suppose. But um, but yeah, it's very good. I like it. I like the idea. I do like the fact that we are just kind of sticking out of the, um, sticking out of the water here. And other things are, you know, on top of buildings by the look of it, like that over here, an old mansion look. There's an old mansion there, so if we get over here, we could set up over here. There's like a little, oh, there's some like parasol type things and a helipad by the look of it. There's a sort of an H over there for helicopter landing. There's what's that over there? An overgrown parking lot with some cars in. So, I mean, the map is huge. The map is huge and it's full of lots of very exciting things. So, you know, as you'd play, you would uncover quite a lot of the map and you'd have a wander about and see things. But yeah, I think we've had a good look at the kind of, you know, how the game works on a basic level. And we've built some good stuff and we have a fairly sort of dependent settlement going on where you know, we're OK. We're OK. We can sort of, you know, run things on our own and it's not too bad. Food's OK. Water's OK. Got some wood coming in now. So it's looking OK over here in our little settlement. You know, not perfect, but it's been worse, I think. So I think, yeah, we'll leave it for now. And I think... When this goes into either early access or, you know, a slightly more developed version, we will come back to this because I do like this. I like this sort of thing. I like the fact that it's got exploration and it has a story. I like the fact that there is a bit of a story going. It's not just a case of, right, there you go. You're building a place. Build a place because it's flooded. You've yeah, got a goal. We want to go and find that power station. And we have to go and find our scouts. And we have to go and get radio transmitting going on. Then we can bring more people in and all that kind of stuff. I like the fact that there is a bit of a tale behind what we're doing. So yes, we will come back to this at some point when it goes into, you know, either early access or when it becomes a little bit more complete, we'll dive back in and have a proper play. Because on these kind of initial demo runs, I do tend to fly through them quite quick because I know it's a bit of a one-off. So I want to go and do quite a lot of stuff in one video. Whereas if we come back and play it for a series, I'm going to take a little bit more care and go and meet all the people and see what we're doing and, you know, plan things out a bit better. But, uh, yeah, I think this is a good look at the game, and uh, yes, we shall come back to it at some point in the future. But yes, we'll finish up for now. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other bits and bobs that we get up to in the Geek Cupboard. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. I really hope I don't have to send children down into coal mines or whatever because I would feel like a terrible person. Hello, robot, and I shall call you Alan. Still some homeless people, still hungry people, still sick people. Okay, if you try and reach London, you will end up frosty and dead. Great big human lollipop.